Welcome to Electra Online. Here we're going to talk about finding the potential inside and outside a cylindrical conductor. Now, let's assume it's an infinite cylindrical conductor, and if so, then this would be the electric field outside the conductor. Now, here we have a slight problem. With the sphere, we can make this work, but with a, with a cylindrical conductor like this, we got to watch out. Watch out for what? Well, if we assume that the potential equals zero at infinity, what do you think the potential will be nearby the cylinder? Well, we have a problem if we assume that. So with a cylinder, we kind of have to take a reference point somewhere else besides infinity, and I'll show you in this video why that's the case. So again, let's assume that if electric field is constant, for so for a constant electric field, which of course in this case it's not, but just to develop the equation, for a constant electric field, we can say that E is related to uh, V over D, and if we then rewrite that, we can say from that that V, the potential, is equal to E times D. And again, that's for a constant electric field. And for a non-constant electric field, we write as a differential. We write it as a dV, a change in the potential, is equal to the electric field at that location times a change in distance. And of course, if we do it over a very small distance, dr, then E will be basically constant for that very small change in the distance. We can then calculate a fixed dV for that. But then if we want to find the entire delta V, the entire uh, difference in potential, then we have to integrate, of course, and then we can say that V is equal to the integral of dV, which is equal to the integral of E dr. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do this integral using this equation for the electric field outside the uh, infinite cylindrical uh, conductor. And again, for a cylindrical conductor, if we go outside the conductor, it acts as a cylindrical line, just a simple line, infinite line, where all the charges at the very center of the conductor. That's how that works out. So let's try that. So V is equal to, now remember, we also have to keep in mind that the potential decreases as we go farther away from the charge, and therefore, as R increases, the potential decreases, so we actually need a negative sign in there to compensate for that. Okay, so now what we have is that V is going to be equal to the negative of the integral of lambda, that would be the linear charge density, so lambda here is the charge per unit length, divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught, times 1 over r dr, and we're going to integrate from infinity to, let's say, a point, let's call it A, away from the conductor. All right, if we do that, all this is a constant that can come out, so this is equal to minus the linear charge density, Oop. there we go, divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught, times the integral from infinity to A, uh, times 1 over r dr. Okay, what is the integral of 1 over r dr? Well, we know that that's, of course, the natural log, and so let me continue over here. So V is equal to minus the linear charge density divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of uh, R evaluated from infinity to a point close to the conductor A. Let's plug in the limit, see what we get. That's equal to minus, um, and what I could do, well, I'll do that later. I don't need to do it here. 2 pi epsilon sub naught. Sometimes what I do is I get rid of the negative sign by flipping the limits. That's one way to get rid of the negative sign, but let's not worry about that now. So we plug in the upper limit, so we get the natural log of A minus the natural log of infinity. Now here's the problem. Natural log infinity doesn't disappear. When we integrate something that's 1 over r squared, we get r in the denominator, then we plug in infinity, it goes to 0, but in this case, the natural log infinity is still infinity. So what that means, now when I apply the negative sign, this is equal to lambda, uh, lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times, when I flip these around, the natural log of infinity minus the natural log of A. And notice, unfortunately, Natural log of infinity is infinity. If I subtract the natural log of A from that, it makes no difference. So in relation to this number, this is virtually whatever it is. So the potential difference between a point at infinity and any point close to the conductor 
is an infinite potential difference. So we cannot use this technique to try and find the potential at some point close to conductor like we did with the sphere. If it's cylindrical, we can't use the, this technique. What we have to do instead is pick some arbitrary point of reference like right here and then say let's find the potential difference at some different location at the distance r away from the center and we're going to find the delta v the potential difference from, from some fixed arbitrary point to some point closer to the to the uh, cylinder that's the only way we're able to talk about it because we can't make the assumption that at infinity v is equal to zero that doesn't work for a cylindrical conductor all right in the next video i will then go ahead and show the technique by just starting with an arbitrary point away from the cylinder and then find the potential in reference to it. And that's the only thing we can do. The potential difference between two points away from a cylindrical conductor.